Thank you for the kind introduction and the invitation to talk, talk to you, speak to you today. Um, I will uh, um, talk about coding and decoding of hand movements in the brain, something you do every day um, and that you do effortlessly. Like, you know, you point, you maybe play a piano or other musical instruments, you use tools to operate on a daily basis, and this is developing in your body right up front. Um, you know, this is a prenatal uh, baby with a hand and an adult a finger in a position, so you see the differences in sizes. Here again, uh, the development of a, of a baby brain, a baby hand to an adult hand over the years. So how to operate such a system is quite complicated. And our interest is to understand from the brain side how uh, hand movements are generated. They're very important, right? And they might not be only important for one individual, but uh, hand movements, whether they fail or they make it, can be uh, also a collective problem if, uh, if, if you have, you know, think about uh, goalkeeping uh, in, in the finals of a, of a sports event. So how is the brain or how is the body uh, dealing with hand movements? They are quite, quite complicated. We are uh, perceiving the world uh, with different senses. Um, so we have uh, our visual uh, capacity, we have tactile and proprioceptive information, and we are sucking all this information into our brain to make insightful choices and decisions about how to act and interact with the environment. Right? Some th of these uh, um, actions come very unconsciously, others are highly planned and motivated by internal and external factors. Whatever you do, you decide on an action, you execute the action, so with, the, with this cortical processing, we end up activating muscles through the spinal cord and then making effective movements. Once we do that, uh, we hopefully get to a target that we want to act upon, and then uh, we get sensory information back uh, to the brain, for example, tactile information um, about uh, the weight, the force, uh, and, the, and the texture of an object that we're interacting with. Of course, also visual information again to maybe correct the movement ongoing, or uh, if it's more like a ballistic movement, to at least see when an error happens that we can do it better next time. How is the brain doing that? Um, which brain are areas involved? And how is this so-called sensory motor transformation happening, going from, this is just a computer doing its own thing, um, going from sensory processing to the uh, execution of an action? So there are several brain areas involved uh, in that, um, in the parietal cortex, the so-called enter in